The solar panels unfolded successfully and will declare the Shenzhou 12 launch is complete. Pleased to say that Sarah Webb is joining us again on the News Hour. She's an astrophysicist from Swinburne University. Sarah, good to have you with us again. So, just tell us how big a moment is this for China uh, and more broadly for space exploration? Right. Um, so it's an incredibly huge moment for the, the Chinese Space Agency. Uh, they haven't had a manned mission uh, and a manned flight for about five years now. Um, and building their own Chinese um, orbiting space station is an incredible feat, considering the ISS is almost um, 25 plus years old by the time it will get decommissioned um, and to really continue the research that is so vital for being able to continue deep space exploration. We do need um, space stations like this to do the research. So it's an incredibly uh, large moment for for them and also for the world as well, because, you know, we hope to see that when the space station is up and running, that there will be global participation and, and activities on it. And we'll come back to the global participation in a moment. But I mean, you touched a little bit on it there in your first answer. What's the ambition then for this space station, do you think? Right. So the the Chinese Space Agency has some incredibly ambitious goals over the next um, decade or so. So we've seen in the last couple months that they have successfully landed on Mars. They have continually uh, been able to orbit the moon and send landers back to the moon in just the last five years. Um, and so their, their plans really are to expand their their own research um, and their reach within space. So um, exactly right, your reporter Sarah said they were late to the party for the space race, absolutely. Um, it's only been about 13 years since the, the space agency was um, constructed, but within those 13 years, they've more than basically caught up with the, the, the developments that um, you, uh, America and Russia have been doing in the past, you know, 40, 50 plus years in, in research and development. Um, so it is very impressive uh, that their feet, and I'm very excited to see uh, the continuation of this in the coming decades. Absolutely. I mean, space exploration in itself can be kind of benign, but there's always the fear when you have great powers in space of the militarization of the area. Uh, how much is that Absolutely. overplayed, or are we right to be sort of a little cautious about this? Right. Um, so this is a really good, uh, that's a really good question. And something that uh, a lot of people might not consider is uh, the gray area that we come to when we get to space. So uh, most countries, most sp space abiding countries um, have to follow certain treaties. However, a treaty is not a law abiding rule. It is not something that we have an international collaboration that can enforce these rules. A treaty is something that you join willingly as a nation. Um, and not all of these treaties have been joined by, by different space agencies. Um, and something that is as recent as the Artemis Accord. So this is when we are going back to the moon. And what does that mean? You know, we, we do not want to militarize the moon. We do not want to have any sort of activity that could jeopardize both the moon itself, but also life um, if there is any dangerous things that are happening um, and we've seen that China has not signed those accords as of yet um, which is concerning because really how, how do you man uh, or how do you regulate space which is something that in the next decade is going to become very important um, and not just in what are we sending to space but also how do we control safety in space um, yeah. It is very interesting in a, in a big grey area. It certainly is. I mean, it was kind of mentioned in the NATO press conference. I don't know if you were boring enough to have watched that the other day, but there was talk about satellites being struck and how that's an attack on a nation. Uh, so uh, it does sort of beg the question then, does this then need a further treaty, perhaps? You've got the Artemis Accords, but does there need to be something else signed in the next few years? Right, that's, that's another brilliant point, is we're, we're at this stage now where more satellites than we've ever had in orbit will be entering orbit in the next couple of years with these massive satellite constellations. Um, and it is on the onus of the nation and the companies who send in the satellites that whatever damage is caused is, is then um, dealt with by, by that nation. It's almost like an insurance policy, right? Um, but again, how do you enforce that? And if something does go wrong, I'm sure most people have seen the, the classic movie Gravity, that runaway kind of space collision where one thing hits another and they're moving at such high velocities that controlling debris in space can be very difficult as well as tracking. Um, so I think absolutely in the next next coming years, I, I would love to see um, more, more accords and more treaties put into place um, to be able to regulate and also just really maintain 
this amazing community that we are growing globally, but we want to, we want to see it, um, you know, be the best it can, be peaceful, be safe. Yeah, let's hope it uh, can be that way. Okay, Sarah, we're from Swinburne University. Always good to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.